What's going on everyone? I'm out here at Bodega Bay today. This is my favorite place to fish. I haven't been out here since December. Here out with uh, Chris today. Reason why I like Bodega Bay so much is you have so many options. You got salmon, the rockfish and link cod, halibut, Dungeness crab. Uh, I have one crab pot with me today that we're gonna drop. Hopefully we can get some on that one. Um, we should have good weather. The wind's supposed to die down to like one, two mile per hour. It's just still after a little six in the morning right now. Um, Swell's good as well. Looking at the charts I launched near Bodega Head, the swell there is just under five feet at about 16 second intervals. So that's that's fairly good. Um, and then where I'm fishing at is even better, at Tamales Point, um, you can see about three and a half foot is the height about every 16 seconds. So that's definitely good there. So yeah, we should have a, a good trip out here today. Kind of don't know exactly what we're gonna do first. Uh, so <laughs> we'll discuss it. We'll turn the camera back on and we'll be somewhere. So while we were trying to figure out where we wanted to go fish, we dropped our crab pot and the orange canisters there is uh, anchovies and smelt. And then we have uh, two halibut heads also in there. Uh, we dropped this pot in about 70 feet of water. All right, so we're out here trying to catch some smelt. We're gonna uh, decide it on uh, Tamales Bay first. So uh, yeah, let's get some live bait. I've made a video on how to do all this if you haven't checked that out already, so please do. I've been asked often uh, what it's like entering or exiting Tamales Bay. Um, I've never had a problem with it. I always go when the conditions are good though. Um, swell under 5 feet, wind under 10 miles per hour. I think as long as uh, you're under both of those, you shouldn't have a problem. Let me know if I'm wrong. But you also want to study some maps. Uh, basically, you want to stay along the west side. You know, not get near Dillon Beach. Uh, that's where it gets shallower and the you know, waves are more hazardous there. Um, so yeah. So we got four smell. It was harder today. It took about a half hour to get the four. So we'll go ahead and drop those down in the halibut grounds right now. So there's four bull elk out here in Tamales Bay. The herd was farther back. I don't think we can see it right now, but probably 20 or 30 of them. I'm going to do something a little different than last time. I'm not going to put the hook through his mouth this way because I think it makes it hard for him to breathe. So we're going to just get the upper lip. Like so. And the back hook, just get it somewhere in them. There we go. And we just got a nice big live smelt on there. All right, Chris is on right here. He got off. Yeah. Dang. God, that thing was pulling hard. Yeah. That thing was yeah. pulling really hard. You see that it took off? Yeah. So after Chris got that bite, we drifted around Hog Island for maybe about another 30, 45 minutes. Then we decided to get some more fresh uh, smelt. Once we got the smelt, we uh, went over to Marshall, drove over there. That's where I got um, some halibut last time I was in this area a few weeks ago. Um, once we got there, the weather really started clearing up. And uh, maybe about 30 minutes in, uh, got a nice bite. Um, I saw the, the bite happening oh, and just the fish didn't man, stick. Man, look at that, guys. Waited, you know, 30 seconds and reeled it up and it was all scratched up. Um, so after we were there for maybe an hour and a half, we went back over towards Hog Island. Um, ran into uh, Kayak Fishing with Matt. I've watched a few of his videos before on YouTube. Go ahead and check him out. He's a looking nice guy. Um, once we drifted there for a little bit, no more action. Um, we thought maybe it was time. Oh boy, we didn't get one, no Hallie. It's like 12 o'clock. I'd say we spent at least four hours drifting for him. He had one on and I had a bite. We saw one get caught in a kayak. Well, conditions cleared up, so we're gonna go try for salmon, rockfish. But first up, we'll go try and see the salmon, see if there's any boats out there that we can spot fishing for them. Hopefully they're close, not far. So we're heading out to Wallace Bay and heading to the Big Blue. Follow us there. So we're out 
out the salmon grounds now. It's what we wanted to see. Probably, I don't know, 30 boats at least up along this stretch. Probably 180, 200 feet it looks like. Maybe a, a mile or two from shore. So we're gonna go ahead and troll along here now. On the radio, we just heard they caught a 31 incher. So there are fish here. Let's we'll start here. We got this flasher, underwater camera, and a five and a half inch apex. We're gonna go ahead and put that one out. Um, probably gonna do one about 66 feet and one about 88 feet. For whatever reason, I always just choose the same number, like 55, 66, 77, 88. This is what I do. <laughs> wow, this is exciting. Haven't dropped salmon lines in since October. I was quite impressed with the sound the Apex lure gives off in the water. Take a listen. So I just dropped that rod down. It's only been in the water for a few minutes. You see, I'm still working on the second pole. I haven't even dropped that one down yet. So we're not even paying attention to it because we wouldn't expect a fish to be on already. Come on. We got a salmon! Feels really small. They gotta be 20 inches to keep. like 15 16 inches it's on the underwater underwater camera so we'll get a shot that way but awesome some other guys just hooked up on one too so there's definitely fish in this area so when you do your crippled anchovy um you put this red thing through it to keep it in there you want a little slight bend when you get the bend you're looking for you need to bring toothpicks with you and you'll stick that in push it up and break it off what that does is keeps the, the line with that bend on it. And then I want one hook facing that way and the other hook facing the other direction. And I'll keep that second hook in place with the rubber band. So like so, right like that. over here for Chris. So I'm gonna slow down a little bit. So we're gonna try and keep him on the side he was caught on. So he doesn't get tangled with this one right here. So I'm turning the boat this way to keep the fish on that side and we'll bring that downrigger up. As you will see, this move will play dividends later. Hopefully this is first keeper of the season for us. So we were just going by a boat who hooked up. I yelled, what depth? It's at 50 feet. Dropped it straight to 50, fish on. I'm still in gear going forward, but a little slower than trolling speed. When I'm ready to net it, I'm just gonna go into neutral. It's a keeper. It's 
So like I said, we're just in neutral right now while Chris finds this fish. It's actually a pretty nice size. Looks to be maybe 12 pounds or so. So his only obstacle is the downrigger. Mine too for netting. So you're gonna see the camera start flickering right now as this file goes corrupt. Luckily I'm running another camera. So he's gonna reel it all the way down, lift up. Fish still wants to fight. We'll reposition. As long as he keeps that line tight. Oh shit, we hit our obstacle. As long as he keeps that line tight. Oh, there we go. It's fun. This is why salmon fishing is the most fun. You get them at the boat, and it's a blast. This fish. Oh, yeah. There we go. Nice. So we're going to check real quick, make sure it's a king. It looks like it is. Black mouth. Spots on the tail. We're good. This thing is bigger than 12 pounds. It's a nice fish. We're not even done bleeding that first one. This is literally five minutes later. And that, that one we first caught was on the uh, crippled anchovy. This one's on the apex. Oh, he's right there. All right, he's smaller. Go forward a little bit. Drive. Neutral. So after I bleed my salmon, I gut them out, throw them on ice. Uh, let's get away before we do that. Looks like a 15, 15, 16, 15 pounder. 15 pounds. Mine's probably 12. Mine's a lot smaller. Mine's a 10 pounder. Here's its stomach. So there's his stomach right there. It's all full of krill. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Eating good. Yeah. That must be with those. I wonder if the sun is picking up those big things. Damn. 
That was a lot. Well, that was amazing. We got two really nice salmon. Um, we probably fished for them for maybe two hours. I would say the bite, all three of them, the shaker and the two keepers, probably within 45 minutes of each other. Uh, we haven't seen any in the last 45 minutes, hour caught. So we're gonna take this opportunity right now and just go ahead and head in, pick up that crab pot. Um, how many think are in there? My guess is four, we each get two. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Six. Six, ooh. Six. All right, follow us to the crab pot. We just grabbed the pot, pulling it up right now. All right, we're getting towards the end here. How's it feel? Feels heavy. Nice, all right. There's something in there. All right, let's dip it down. Man, that's awesome. Look at there. We got five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Some nice ones in there. All look like nice keepers. So this is the smallest one. There was five in there. Looks like it's a keeper. Yep, just barely a keeper. So we got five nice crab. One of them looks to be over seven inches. Where's the big one at? <laughs> Look at that one. That's a nice big crab. Let's put the gauge on it. Seven inch, that's what that mark is right there. Seven inch crab. Ow! It's gone. It got me too. <laughs> well, that's a bummer. I lost that big crab, huh? Look at my finger. Oh, it's going to be like black and blue under the nail. It also got Chris as well. <laughs> Two spots. <laughs> it's the first it's the first time both of us have ever been <laughs> uh, pinched by a crab. It was the same and one. And it was the same one. And it got away because of it, so. There's another blooper reel for you guys. So we're going to head in. What a fun day out here. Uh, started off slow with the halibut in Tomales Bay. We didn't get one. Uh, hours in there. Went out to the salmon grounds and hooked up. First salmon of the year. That's what we really wanted. So stoked. We got four crab too. So we got crab and salmon for dinner. Uh, you have anything to add, Chris? If you want to keep watching these shows, subscribe to Chris's channel. Oh, there you go. And I don't have to say it. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, thank you.